Good morning, everyone. My name is Jack Dangerman, and I'm very pleased to meet with you. I wish I could be over there in Turkey, but unfortunately, I'm here in California. Uh, and help you launch this very important meeting for your country and our profession. The purpose of this meeting is, like many of our conferences, simply being together and learning from each other, sharing what we know, creating relationships. I thought in my talk, I'd like to share what I see in, in the trends of GIS applications, provide you a kind of vision for where I think GIS is going, and also share a bit about what's happening in the technology of our uh, field underneath our great work. You are a very special organization. The academics and professionals, uh, whether they be from the commercial sector or in government, have come together over the years in this meeting to simply be together and share it's intriguing because your backgrounds are so diverse. Your organizations are different. In many ways, your interests are different. But you come together because you have a kind of common cause or a common uh, set of values that uh, bring you together. Your work, and here I really want to talk about the general community of geospatial work, is addressing so many of the great challenges in our world both locally and also globally. It's delivering value in so many fields. And I'd like at the beginning of this meeting simply to share some of the work that's going on. Some of your work is in land use planning and city planning and urban planning, whereas others have focused on environmental assessments using geography as a framework to better understand and protect our world. Others here, particularly in the surveying and land information business, are organizing a foundation for our civil society by organizing land ownership, a foundation for taxation and so many things, property rights, etc. Some of you are working in renewable natural resource exploitation, and others are in the engineering field, um, using GIS as a foundation for asset management and, and civil works design. In the world of public safety, GIS is well distinguished not only for making our world safer, but also responding to emergencies like disasters. And we're facing a lot of these with uh, climate change. The business community is beginning to understand the dimensions of location and its power for economic development and site selection getting the geographic advantage, as I uh, sometimes refer to it. And, of course, it's delivering huge value in the world of human health, public health. This time period of COVID and other diseases uh, have made it clear that mapping of demographics and spread of epidemics have been profound in terms of uh, telling everyone what's going on, making people aware. These maps illustrate the application of GIS in national security, in defense, and also providing humanitarian aid to those who are in need. I like these maps because they show the application of GIS thinking in utilities, in transportation, and in telecommunications. GIS is delivering value through its mapping and charting activities, and also the integration of imagery and remote sensing has been phenomenal in terms of its impact. All of these examples are examples that many of you are working on or with, and I think they are profound in the sense that they are advancing our understanding of our world in many ways. I'd like to shift my talk to a kind of vision of using the work that you do, mapping, GIS as a framework for mapping common ground. These words are important, and at the beginning of this talk, I really want to define them. It's about bringing geographic information together and creating agreed upon understanding, action that could be creating a more positive world. Today, our world is, is challenged. Humans are living recklessly. And we know this through many signals. 
human-induced climate change, the pollution that we are doing in our world, the congestion of our cities, unconstrained development, and an overpopulation has led to instability, creating conflicts uh, on so many fronts, social conflicts, polarization in our politics, uh, impacts like drought and water crisis. You know, ladies and gentlemen, fundamentally, humans are challenging our very sustainability. And for many of the young people, you recognize better than almost anyone how this is threatening our and your futures. The central problem of our time is a kind of lack of understanding and a failure to collaborate. We must address this problem urgently, whether it be in politics or whether it be in the broader population. You and your work are powerful because they help create understanding. Mapping and what I like to call the geographic approach are very powerful means for helping people understand quickly and also explore different alternatives for our future and find solutions and then reach agreement using visualization tools. I like to call this mapping common ground, a foundation for positive action. And there are so many examples of this in urban planning, in forest management, and environmental uh, activities. Maps, your work, are very positive. It's a kind of fundamental language for telling stories, helping us understand and collaborate. Mapping not only what is, but also what could be, plans. Now, these maps date back from what I can tell thousands of years. Of course, they were not very sophisticated graphics at the time, but as civilization has advanced, mapping has advanced. And there is a kind of cause-effect relationship here. I think your work today in digital GIS will have a profound effect on advancing our civilization, making our world more sustainable. Mapping common ground, this idea, requires that we consider many factors, actually all the factors, uh, environmental factors, economic factors, and social factors. Our framework of geography and mapping provide the science and the language to do this, to reflect all the, all the complexity of our world and illustrate patterns and relationships so that we can do better decision-making. I like to call this the geographic approach. It's a way of thinking spatially and problem-solving that integrates all the geographic sciences, all the information. And through this overlay idea, it allows us to take not only a science-based approach, data-driven, but also a holistic approach and an integrated approach, integrating everyone and making it understandable through maps. This common framework is impactful in almost every activity, as we saw in the examples I shared, in our society. GIS, this 50-year-old idea and technology, enables this geographic approach. It allows us to organize all of our data collection and visualize it through mapping. It allows us to analyze and model and predict and design, make decisions thoughtfully, and then take action. It's both a process and a framework for creating understanding and facilitating collaboration. Now, this technology, some have said, is a kind of living digital twin. It involves digitizing with rich data models all aspects of, of, our, of our world. It increasingly is in real time, and it's transactionally maintained through human action. It's becoming 3D, and it's supporting so many thousands of applications. Through the power and, and miracles of the web and cloud, it's becoming accessible through devices anywhere, anytime, and on any device. 
GIS is fundamentally an information system. It allows the collection of information from many sources, whether they be surveys or maps or real-time IoT measurements or the integration of BIM models or also remote sensing into these models that then can be accessible through mapping for analytics, for storytelling, for decision makers, actually everyone, individuals, organizations, and all of us in our communities. This technology is advancing very rapidly. It's being driven by advances in science as well as technology. And the innovations that are coming on top of these databases are far too long for me to go into in this presentation. But this meeting will be covering many of them in many ways. I intend to just cover 10 big trends very rapidly to share with you my sense of powerful motivators and changers that are occurring. Number one, GISs of all types, desktops, server systems, and the web are all becoming interconnected. They're creating uh, something called geospatial infrastructure. Uh, there are distributed services that are linked together with web services, and some have described this as a kind of system of systems. Um, and it's going to connect and integrate all of us, enabling better collaboration and workflows and better decisions. Almost any kind of data can now be abstracted as web maps and made available through various apps that can change people's thinking. This geospatial infrastructure has one key. Listen carefully. This is called a GIS portal. If this graphics here describes distributed GIS servers, they can be brought together through a portal which organizes all the metadata and makes the data directly available. There are thousands of these portals now beginning to emerge on top of the emerging geospatial infrastructure. And this is growing very rapidly with millions of users making, well, sharing their data sets as services, making billions of maps together, and it's reaching billions of people. This is a new pattern, ladies and gentlemen, for enterprise GIS, bringing all the departments together, or national GIS, bringing all the participants, like everybody here in the audience, together through common web GIS environments. Trend number two is mapping is becoming increasingly powerful and also increasingly interesting to people. Smart web mapping, production mapping, Dynamic mapping, real-time mapping is driving the way we think and we change. And they're becoming embedded into all sorts of other applications. The storytelling world is being impacted with what we call story maps. And this embeds maps about everything, consumer maps, uh, science maps. And this is exponentially growing. There's just millions of these that are now published going into schools, reaching citizens, and there's billions of these stories being told and looked at every day. The third trend is a huge series of advances and in innovations in analytics. Some of these involve modeling, predictive modeling, some integrate AI and machine learning, new tools like interactive exploration, tools and graph analytics are being added. And then there's the world of big data and raster analytics in the cloud. These advances are making profound impact on helping people understand, giving us new insights about how our world is working. And all of that knowledge is becoming available through apps. Of course, everyone here would know the power of desktop apps, but this is shifting quickly to mobile apps with literally millions of people now collecting data in mobile devices, sharing it with others, and also having access to this information. And then finally, the world of uh, web apps is exploding with dashboards and real-time story maps. There's millions of these out, and they're empowering everyone to uh, reach back and receive the power of all of your good work. The area of data management, like managing systems of record, is also advancing with, with big data. 
integrating all types of data with new web-focused, industry-focused data models that are smarter. And another trend is ready-to-use content. In the past, we used to have to collect all of our own data and uh, then build a GIS and apps. Today, there are thousands of maps that are both curated as web services, but also there are millions of maps that are being shared on the web by users so they can begin to use each other's work. Trend number seven is very powerful for some of you. It is GIS is becoming 3D. Here I'm not simply talking about 3D rendering, I'm talking about a 3D system of record, which is transactionally maintained. And in a city, for example, serves every department with applications as focused as space management to city planning or asset management, available through web and uh, mobile device environments. Fueling this, in part, is new technology which integrates imagery and reality capture, capturing 3D photorealistic models of reality from aircraft or drones that can be immediately overlaid on traditional GIS environments. This transformation using digital photogrammetry is a new major contribution that is making measurement and 3D reality representation uh, quickly available. This is an example in Utrecht in Holland where overflights were made by an aircraft and at great detail 3D uh, point cloud clusters or sometimes called um, well, they're, they're like dot pictures, they're 3D pictures. And look at the great fidelity coming right off of aircraft, processed, and then overlaid on top of a vector GIS database. You can see the great uh, fidelity in the buildings and get kind of a sense of, well, look at the, the cathedral here with these, what they call, uh, well, these big spans you can actually, this is all taken from aircraft and immediately processed automatically to create these pictures. Underneath it is a vector database, which is also part of the 3D system of record, which is uh, being maintained through transactions. You see the picture layered on top of this. And so the picture actually gives us a 3D understanding of reality, but underneath the picture, of course, is the attributes and the features of every one of these buildings. I mean, what I can do actually is go to this building right here and make a query, uh, what's there? Or, or ask for all the government buildings and they turn blue in this particular case. Or if I inquiry on that particular building, it will tell me all of the attributes of, that are behind the picture. This is almost like a miracle because it makes GIS outputs uh, very human and uh, the UI UX is powerful. This supports a new world. Uh, you know, ESRI has many research labs. One of the research labs is right there in Turkey, and they're experimenting with integration of game images with GIS so that we can actually visualize in uh, these very powerful augmented reality or virtual reality settings, the very databases that uh, are here. I'll conclude with one fifth one, that, uh, one tenth one that I find very interesting, which is, GIS is going indoors, organizing buildings and campuses. With the new IPS or indoor positioning systems, it takes the blue dot or the green dot indoors, so it will help navigation as in, in all kinds of structures. Well, ladies and gentlemen, these are some of the big trends that I think are occurring in applications and technology. But I'll conclude by simply saying GIS, mapping, art, absolutely essential for addressing some of the big challenges that we are facing on the planet. Biodiversity, coming up with uh, more sustainable communities, improving efficiency, something that we must do. And these kinds of applications require exactly you, the thoughtful work of GIS professionals, not simply being at the effect of the reality, but uh, being able to map the reality or the future that we want to see. Geospatial professionals have important responsibilities in this domain, and here I'm speaking to each of you. It is about facilitating the creation of creating a better future. 
seeing what's needed and wanted. Many of you do this in your work. Supporting community engagement and collaboration through mapping. Connecting the databases that you are making, uh, the science that you support, with decision makers. Uh, and then enabling these holistic approaches that the geography approach really supports. And in all of this, it's important in this age of, of crazy social media and uh, untruthful statements of being true to your science and your profession, maintaining the public trust in mapping. This process involves listening, understanding what's needed, resolving conflicts, and coming up with solutions. I think this, this meeting, as I mentioned before, is very important. It's important for your community here and also going forward. So thank you for the opportunity to share my thoughts on applications and technology trends and, and what it all means. And I wish I was there enjoying Turkey with all of you and, and, the, and the delightful experience of literally being together. Thank you.